Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Raw Men. We're on episode 89, I do believe, and this time I'm talking to Jen, uh, Jen Scott and Jim Helton of American Atheists. And are you both of also of Tri-State uh, Tri Freethinkers? That is correct. I am the co-founder of the Tri-State Freethinkers. And I'm the vice president and treasurer. All right. Now, the most famous thing I think that Tri-State Three Freethinkers, I can't, why can't I not say that? <laughs> Tri-State <laughs> Free thinkers uh, is known for is uh, their uh, protests of the art park, which got quite a bit of publicity, and we're doing that again, as I understand it. What is the goal this time around? We want to bring national attention to what the ARC stands for and what's going on. And this is much more than just the ARC encounter itself and the problems it faces. This is happening all over the state of Kentucky for the separation church and state and the country. When you look at sex education, women's rights, LGBT rights, the list goes on. This is all religion dictating discrimination around the country. Yeah, there was a sermon done here in Dallas a couple of week, uh, couple of days ago where they were talking about the separation of church and state and what they, they were saying that what that was intended to mean was that no Christian denomination would have an edge over another Christian denomination, but it was supposed to be separation of, you know, the freedom, your, your freedom to religion is your freedom to be Christian. And that's it. Yeah. And, and people have the right to their deeply held religious beliefs, but that line is drawn when they try to impose that on the people. And that is clearly what's happening in the Christian movement now is is to impose their beliefs on sex ed, women's reproductive rights, LGBT rights, any other issues they have. They're trying to impose that on the people through legislation. And they've been fairly successful recently. And I, I know that they, they, want, they also want to advertise uh, that uh, the United States was somehow founded on the Ten Commandments, and we we battled against that quite a bit. And the Tenth Commandment was a thought crime, and that this is something that that you have your freedom to your deeply held religious beliefs. You have your freedom to think. You have the freedom to to believe what you will. No one should be punished for what they believe or don't believe, because how is that even a moral issue, or even could be? But you only have that with a secular polit uh, political situation. You don't have that within Christianity and you don't have that with any other religion that I'm aware of either. Yeah, and the Ten Commandments are unconstitutional when you actually look at them. If you break them down one by one, they go directly against what our constitution says. When yeah, you break them down. And, yeah, the very first amendment, we have the freedom of speech where we're, you know, and if you look at the Ten Commandments, I, you know, where I am your God and, and all these other issues, uh, that they say once you break them down, they go directly against our First Amendment and our Constitution. Yeah, First Amendment contradicts the First Commandment. Yeah. So, uh, what what do you see? Uh, what what do you see happening with this new protest of the of the Ark Encounter? How do you figure that's going to go? How how do we draw people out to that? Yeah, we're very excited about it. It's gotten a lot of attention. One thing when we did when we did this the first time, it got international attention. You know, we had multiple film crews that we believe in dinosaurs movie, the Bill Nye film crew, just to name a few. The Miami Herald, New York Times, Washington Post. We were doing Fox, you know, live, and it changed the story. Where most of the stories were fluff pieces about you know this arc and how neat it was. Once we did that protest. They were covering all the problems, the anti-science, the state tax money, the religion. It, it changed the story. And we thought it was a one-time thing. But as we got further away from that event, we started to see the shift of the story starting to be about the arc and positive again. So we decided to make it an annual event and to draw attention to it. And when we did that the second time, uh, it brought back that negative attention. Even the Christian Post and the Christian Daily and the World News was covering our protests when they mention the ark the lexington herald anytime they do a piece on the ark they link to the video of the protest so people can see so we want to draw attention to the ark encounter that is not a family fun day it's it's a story about genocide and incest they're taking state money it's they're discriminating uh their discriminatory hiring practices are just unbelievable that give me some details so, because I understand that they want they wanted to switch back and forth between being you know, between getting the tax incentives while saying at the same time that they didn't get a dollar, you know, of of our taxes, but they they were getting promised at that time eighteen million of or up to eighteen million. Yeah, and then they wanted to do this uh, th this discriminatory hiring, which wouldn't be allowed. I wouldn't have thought if you're going to be qualified for these tax incentives. So tell me more about that. 
Sorry, as a for-profit company, you can't discriminate, but you qualify for state incentives. As a nonprofit, you can discriminate, but you can't qualify for state incentives. So what they did was they made their entrance gate a for-profit company, sent a letter to the state of Kentucky saying, we're a for-profit company. We want to, you know, we want all these state tax incentives. And then at the same time, they sent a letter to the city and said, we're a church. We're not, we don't want to pay taxes. So they sent these letters out almost simultaneously on these issues. At one, so the, the entrance gate's a for-profit company. The boat's a nonprofit. So Catholics can't work there. Jewish people can't work there. Atheists can't work there. You have to believe the earth is 6,000 years old to work there. In addition, if you're single, you have to sign a valid chastity saying you won't have sex. Uh, if you're LGBT, you don't qualify. They were having such a hard time hiring people, though, because nobody qualified that this year, if you're a summer person and just like seasonal worker, you no longer have to adhere to all the restrictions. Only the full time employees do. So they, they weren't able to hire enough people because nobody qualified. Now, wasn't there also a thing about switching back and forth? I mean, not just trying to do both at the same time, but but it, it didn't he like first of all, he, he got this massive park, you know, hundred million dollar investment. He didn't actually invest. He just got it given to him by other people for free. And then he tried to sell that gift to himself, to himself for like $5 so that he wouldn't have to pay the taxes on it. Can you, am I getting any of this right? Can you clarify? Yes, that was a city tax that the city of Williamstown put on place for safety. So that <clears throat> they put a 50 cent per ticket tax on tickets for parks, which included the Ark Encounter and a little family, small park down the street. The Ark Encounter didn't want to pay that money. So in order to get around that, he sold the property for the Ark Encounter from the for-profit company to the non-profit company so that then he can claim to be a church to avoid $750,000 in taxes. And when the state sent him a letter saying, well, that'll disqualify you from the $18 million in uh, subsidies, he said, oh, I'll sell it back. So that's what happened. <laughs> so he sold it back to himself to get the $18 million and the, it almost the, money, the safety tax. It, it, it almost seems like uh, his form of religion is some sort of a scam or tax dodge or means of manipulating people out of their money so that he doesn't have to get a real job. <laughs> oh, no, no doubt. I mean, he has worked the system to its fullest, and the politicians in Kentucky have let him get away with it. Even when he transferred by Kentucky law, when he transferred that part to the nonprofit, he lost his $18 million. When he transferred it back, he technically had to reapply and go through the process again. And they just acted like nothing happened. Even though it transferred three times, they just acted like nothing happened. That's, that's the thing I don't understand about this. When, you, when you're doing something that is technically criminal, why are you still being hailed as if you're moral when what you're literally doing is lying to people? Yeah. Uh, and, and, the, and the politicians here are catering you know, to to the religious right here in Kentucky. And so, you know, we have a governor that is all for creationism, all for prayer in schools, uh, all for Bible. Got The Bibles are now taught in public schools in Kentucky. That's really disturbing. I, I, I don't know, I don't know how, to, how to address that. I mean, every time I, every time I encounter a believer in person, I, I, I have to delve a little bit into just how deluded they are. And, and it's, it's, it's disturbing to see what's, what's been done to their minds. I mean, like a couple of days ago, there was a woman actually knelt down in the street, in the middle of the street, praying for me. You know, and, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and I yelled out to her, you know, do not be like the hypocrites to where you, you're praying out in public where people can see you pray in the privacy of your own room. Like Jesus said, but of course she doesn't <laughs> listen to that because you know, they pick and choose and, Mm -hmm. It's all their imaginary friend. Anyway, I heard rumors from people in Kentucky that said that things are even worse than that, that, that Ken Ham somehow has this influence over uh, uh, like education, educational situations. So that you know, anybody that tries to teach the truth will end up getting uh, punished in some way. Can you flesh that out any? I, I don't know how. I mean, Ken Ham does have a huge influence in the state. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and it's his belief system. So I don't know how much is directly to Ken Ham or indirectly. But when teachers try to teach comprehensive sex ed instead of the religious based absence to only, they do get backlash, uh, you know, from this. And, and this is what we're teaching. We're teaching sex ed, not only in Kentucky. There's only 13 states that require proper sex ed. Only 13. 
So in Kentucky, it's legal to lie to children. My son in his school, public school, was told condoms have a 35% failure rate. Wow. Okay. Uh, so it's not like you could look up those statistics and verify. Yeah. He raised his hand and said, it's only 2% if you would teach us how to use them. You know, he also passed out, pl I stand with Planned Parenthood Church to his class, to some of his classmates. You know, while, <laughs> and by the way, it was a church there teaching it as well in the public school system. And this just is in Kentucky. This is around the country. So and those how, educators uh, don't have to have any credentials whatsoever. No, I'm sorry, I didn't make, I didn't hear that. Educators don't have to have what? Credentials. So you can be teaching sex ed to students in public school with no medical or teaching background whatsoever. The church-based programs hire them. Oh yeah. Well, I guess I guess religious schools don't have those kind of criteria. They just you 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 mail away for a, a form that says you're a doctor. Pay your hundred dollars. And then now you're in the public school, though. Now you're going into the public school, school teaching this. Uh, so his influence is big. You know, also, when you look at there's only nine cities that that you can't discriminate against the LGBT community in Kentucky. Like in most cities, you can fire somebody for being gay. You can refuse them service. Uh, you know, all these all these issues. Uh, you can refuse them housing. This is all legal in Kentucky and in about half the states around the country. And it's based on this religious crap that, you know, they're using hiding behind their religion to discriminate against people. So getting back to the the, uh, the, the protest, the demonstration, the rally itself, whatever that is, tell us what that is and how do, how do we get people interested in, in taking part in that? Uh, there is a Facebook event on the American Atheist page and the Tri-State Freethinker page. Uh, we're going to have the Secular Coalition for America, Block Nonbelievers, yourself. The Phil Ferguson show, Seth Andrews, the Thinking Atheist. I know I'm missing people, uh, but check out the Facebook event. You should come check it out. We'll we'll have a great protest on the side of the highway with signs, banners, chants. We'll have a series of speakers. Then we're going to march two by two of same sex to the Ark Encounter because they have sidewalks now. So when you were there, they didn't have sidewalks. So we can actually get right up on the entrance of the Ark Encounter. We'll drop our genocide and incest park banner right in front of the entrance gate. Uh, then we'll march back uh, two by two. We'll have some. We'll have some pizza. We'll hear some additional speeches and protests near, uh, and then we'll call it a day. But it's an absolutely fabulous event. We want to draw attention. I think the Ark is the symbol of religious discrimination, and we want to draw attention to it to let people know that you know this is not okay. There are people that will stand up for your rights, that will stand up for equal rights. And my favorite quote that came from the protest was when, is when equality is under attack, atheists show up. And that's exactly what we need to do. That's outstanding. Uh, I, and, and the speakers, this is more, as I understand it, this is more of a rally sort of a thing. So these are like short, uplifting or, or, or uh, uh, empowering kind of presentations, that, that the kind of thing? Yeah, five, 10 minutes, you know, get the crowd going, inspirational, motivate it. And, and people ask, like, were we drawing attention to this thing? But if you look at, as a movement, what we've got out of the first one, uh, if you look who showed up, we have three of our regional directors for American Atheists were at that original protest. Our Kentucky State Director, uh, like eight, was it five different assistant directors and th three other different state directors all came from meeting at that ARC encounter protest. It brought out activists who said, I've had enough. What can I do about it? Uh, and we've given them a platform and tools to go make a difference in their city and their state of fighting for equal rights uh, for people. So it is a great way to meet people. It is a great networking opportunity uh, to meet some of the top activists around the country will be there. All right. All right. We're expecting groups from St. Louis, from Chicago, from Detroit, all of them to come down here to Kentucky to help protest the Ark Encounter. Do you have any ballpark estimates on a turnout? It's hard to say. Usually there's a hundred to 200 people usually come. Uh, yeah. Usually have a couple of hundred people, people that are RSVP'd. I mean, I don't, I don't mean extrapolate beyond that. Just people, you know, minimum will be there. A minimum over a hundred for sure. Outstanding. Cause that, that was, we, we didn't have a hundred people at the first one, did we? Yeah, th there was about, a, about a hundred, 125 people there at any one time. We figured about 200 people filtered through there. That other 75 might have been press, <laughs> you know, with, with all the press. But th there was about 100 people there at any at any one time. And the second year was about the same, was about 100. I think this year is going to be bigger uh, with everything that's going on. I mean, the Facebook event has reached 56,000 people have seen it. 
uh, with 800 people interested. Now those are just interest. So who knows what, what that'll actually turn out to. I, I tell you what I like about every time I show up and I have one of those placards to hold up to the, the, the crowd, I always get the believers coming in and you always have that interaction. And that's the thing I'm really into right now. I mean, I mean every time I do this, we always have the face to face and the, and the getting those arguments on video is always hilarious for me. Oh yeah, your arguments at the very first one is is legendary of you going after Hoven and it, it was just you know absolutely fantastic. We're also going to have these these shirts there, and I don't know if I can hold them up if you can see it, but it says protesting yep. creationism for sixty five million years. Okay, so you said now last time we were out on the highway, uh, and and I remember that the best perk that we had at that location was it was a a, a school bus full of kids that were on their way to a field trip to this Ark encounter. And at least some of those kids got to see our signs to realize, mm -hmm. hey, they're 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 selling you a, a whopper here. But now you're saying we're going to be able to be right up on close to it. Good. I haven't seen the new site. <laughs> okay, yeah. So they're doing construction and and widening. That's another thing. They're doing a multi-million dollar project to widen the highway for the arc. So where we had our original protest won't be available, but we'll still be on the other side of the highway. We still feel it's important to set up by the highway for everybody driving by. So we'll have what well, it'll be very close to where it is, but also the sidewalks will we will march up to the arc, which we weren't able to do the first year. We had to take uh, a bus. Right? Is that that's what you're talking about? We 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 took a shuttle to the bathrooms because the porta potties wouldn't deliver to us because we were <laughs> atheists. Uh, but so but we will so we'll have a protest site by by the main main interstate 75, and then okay. it's just a, a quarter mile we'll walk to actually to the front of the arc encounter. And, and being able to have our banner there uh, with all the organizations and their signs right in front of the ARC uh, is, is, it was a really good feeling. Okay. Anything else you want to throw in at the last before we close this up? Jen, any, any parting words? Oh, we didn't talk about the anti-science part of it. Yeah. Oh, please, please. <laughs> I'm suddenly, am yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, good. Yeah, well, that's just one of the things about the Ark Encounter. There's so many things wrong with it. It's hard to cover it all. You know, with the, the anti-science, just teaching children things that aren't aren't true and not making them critical thinkers and setting them up for failure in the future. And I think it's it's a fail, failure of parenting. Yeah, and Arn and I got to actually tour it with the Bill Nye film crew and Bill Nye. So we actually got to go through it and got a personal tour. Uh, I mean, Arn, what did you think actually touring the Ark? I had a lot of a lot of opinions. I was glad that uh, I was glad that Answers in Genesis had assigned us a tour guide. And <laughs> I had great fun with him, especially when we got to what their 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 mini Tyrannus, whatever the, the the little Tyrannosaurus Rex Dromaeosaur thing, because they like make up their own kind of transitional species. Uh, of course, they're not allowed to admit transitional species, but that's actually what these things were designed to be. And so they had these little Tyrannosaurs that look like Deinonychus or something. And I, so I point out to the guy, there's a problem with this. It's missing the feathers. Where are the feathers? And of course, Answers in Genesis is not going to admit to a dromaeosaur with feathers. That, that kind of upsets everything. But that, that, that was a sticking point in, in our arguments. You know, and, and I pointed out a number of the other, like, like Mesohippus and a number of the other uh, uh, of species they had. Why did, you, why did you pick this one? Why did you go to the middle of the, of the equine family tree? Why didn't you go from the beginning? And the guy had no idea what I was talking about at any point because he, he's no, he's no, he's, he believes in kinds and has no idea what a kind is. Mm -hmm. So it was it, it, with a lot of these people. And with, especially when in the first protest with all the people that I talked to there, it's, you have to get into their heads about what do you think this word means? And we'll fix that maybe because there was this one guy that was arguing the DNA, right? Well, the, and he was putting DNA as a plural. Like what about the DNAs? Because <laughs> he was thinking that each, each animal has a schematic sheet of design like you know and, and it's like it's different for every he doesn't understand that you that you can make this cha this change or this change and it becomes that no he's he's thinking that each one has its own patented design and that they're they're like a unique schematic so it's it's really hard to get through when when you have when we don't have any commonality of language that there's no when the guy has no idea what a dna is yeah. <laughs> my, my three most memorable moments from the arc and you mentioned one of them is as soon as i walked in the door 
security was like, hi, Jim. I mean, as soon as we walked the door, we got a personal tour guide, which was nice. And then they offered us lunch. Uh, and Arn and I, they took us in the back office and people were coming and going. And one of the guys come in and was like, Arn, I watch your podcast. Can I get a, can I get a picture? <laughs> and this was somebody that worked there. And he's like, you, you know, you challenge, you make me think. I wonder if he's still working there, but I'll never forget that. I jumped up immediately like, yes, I'd love to take a picture with you and Aaron in the art. So from what with one of the employees. And, and then my third an employee that was given our tour guide yes. had evidence of creation. And I said, OK, well, nobody ever had evidence of creation. So what it, what you know, let's get it on video. What is your evidence? And his evidence was, well, how do you explain where life came from? <laughs> See, that's that's the reason I, I was just called out by, by a theist on, on in another demonstration yesterday because I said that evidence is facts that are positively indicative. And he said I was being redundant by saying positively indicative. Why do you say why does it have to be positively indicative? Because you can't just say that my evidence is you don't have an explanation. So therefore, I'm right. <laughs> you have, to have work that way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it, it has to be positive, not negative. And then my third favorite thing was at the end, uh, I had made arrangements because I missed my kid's birthday because of the the whole art protest is uh, to have my kids picture with Bill Nye. And Bill turned to me and was like, I'm surprised they let you in. <laughs> and I, I, I had pictures with my kids with Bill Nye with Ken Ham in the background, just scowling and pissed off as as we're taking pictures with Bill Nye and my kids. So that that was absolutely probably the, the highlight for me, which was I think after. I've seen that picture. Yeah, uh, it, it was two two girls, and and I could I could see scowling ham off in the. Yeah. it was two girls, right? And I think a, a, there was a third, a boy. Yeah, it was my son and my daughter, and I think my wife got in there on one of them. Uh, okay. And then and then we also had that picture we took in front of the sign where it said God killed everybody. We're all doing the face palm. <laughs> uh, absolutely, my my favorite picture of us. There's like they're admitting it right here. Like people yelled at us that said genocide and incest was harsh, and I'm like, no, wait a minute. They're advertising it right here on the wall. Yeah, uh, they made an, another another important admission. You know that it, that it, that, it, that if you believe in the ark, you'll believe in anything. I mean, I, I know I, I'm trying to remember how they phrased it, but it was a significant flaw in their belief. Yeah, it was the one that was framed by the serpent. Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, I don't know if I ever want to go back, but <laughs> uh, but that that was all in the kids section. So you know what I would do is encourage everybody to come out July seventh, ten a.m. Eastern time, right in front of the Ark, uh, one Ark Encounter Way in Williamstown, Kentucky. It's it's going to be a good time. Uh, lots of people will be there. We encourage everybody to come check it out. You won't forget it. I mean, the people that were at that first one or second one, I don't think it's something they'll ever forget. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't make the second one. That 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 would have been good. Yeah. All right, uh, Jim Helton, Jen Scott of Tri-State Freethinkers, finally said it right. <laughs> and American Atheist. <laughs> and American Atheist, <laughs> and, and myself as well. Um, thank you all for being at, on the Raw Men. We'll see everybody that can make it out in Williamstown, Kentucky. That is correct. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks. Yeah.